many things. Um, he's a, he's a race car driver. He's a mentor. He's a trainer. He's an instructor. Uh, he runs a drifting school in Scandinavia in the winters. When he's not doing that, he's racing other cars in Germany and in other parts of Europe. When he's not doing that, he's setting off Guinness records, breaking records, creating new ones as well. But today, we are speaking to Roni for a very special purpose because we've got a very, very hot film up in theatres. That is John Wick Chapter 4, the last grand finale of that magnificent series. And let me tell you, Ronnie was instrumental in a part of the development of that movie because the car chase scenes that you would see in the film, well, guess who was behind the wheel helping the unit film those insane chase sequences, those insane stunts? None other than Ronnie. You know, it's been a, it's been it's fantastic being following. You know, I mean, we've been following your career, seeing all the stuff that you've been doing for so many years, and now you're part of an epic movie series you know what did what did that feel like yeah first of all but thank you very much for all the praise um i mean it's true i'm living on the accelerator and in that way my um let's say expertise is quite wide and in that way i must say i was very very lucky even if i'm let's say used to stunting and used to racing and all that but I was very very lucky and happy that they chose me and um, because to enter let's say that the stunt team which is already existing and so on um is not like it's falling from the sky you know so um you have and it's always like in life there are people who make that happen somehow so they either see your talent or they like you or both maybe uh, comes together and in that way, um, I must say, I was relieved when they told me, okay, you are in, you know. <laughs> so, so was it, was it exciting? Was it, were you nervous when you were doing that? Because this has been, I mean, the first three parts of John Wick kind of, you know, became, it's become a cult movie. And everybody's been waiting for the fourth movie uh, to come out. Uh, and it, I mean, of course, uh, the thing that made the movie such an epic, such a cult film, of our times is because of not just the car chase sequences but also the action sequences but it was one powerhouse of a film and uh, you know being a part of that uh, film uh, what did it make you feel like were you nervous when you were filming those sequences were you very excited how many let me put this another way how many takes did you have to do <laughs> to get the sequences in place <laughs> see the the reality is i i have to be honest um see when it comes to the barracuda scenes where where john wick i mean keanu is driving i think he did 85 90 percent of all the driving himself so it's not like that i was the one or there was even another name maybe tenor faust is a name in the world so he's from america let's say the guy who is usually sent into these big chase scenes and actually now i was in that and i thought wow i'm actually living the dream right now <laughs> and I'm allowed to be part of it. So my role um, was in the beginning actually doing all the technical rehearsals. And of course I was, um, let's say side by side with Tena in teaching Keanu because we, it's also not like Keanu um, is a proper, proper race driver. He is of course an actor which learned and improved his own skills. So however we could set his bar um, made specific things possible. But these things were, of course, also, how to call it, staged into his world of um, capabilities. So actually, what I remember, for example, there was one scene where I was allowed to drive the um, Barracuda and it was a little bit like a Guinness World Record situation <laughs> because, <laughs> because uh, you know, the, the time window which was existing on that street, because it was in the middle of the um, center, in the night, midnight, in Berlin, we faked France. And it was a move which, and you will see it in the movie, yeah? I was going reverse, and then I had to flick the car like this, zoom, and park the car in front of um, parked cars. So, but I had on my left side, a guy which I had to throw and I had to throw him actually into these parked cars. So this was a very crucial moment and I had to be very precise and it was actually 
you know, it was not only the cars and me, it was also a human being in between. So in that way, the precision had another value. This is the big question because in all of the films so far, we've seen all of these chase sequences, these action sequences with uh, John Wick and his car, whether it was the boss Mustang. And now, of course, in, uh, in mm. uh, John Wick 4, you've seen the, the Plymouth Barracuda. The big question mm. is, you know, the car goes around knocking these people off everywhere. Does that actually happen? You know, does it hurt them? <laughs> is it and and if, if you believe it or not, all the people flying around are not animated. So they created a car hit stage, for example. They created a car folded in foam so that people could actually got hit, flow over the car and landed probably on the ground, maybe on mats, maybe not. So they also had a lot of protection. And if you believe it or not, it can also cause, in theory, that someone gets hurt. Practically, they were also sometimes on wires and so on. So when it became really dangerous in terms of heights and so on, people got covered. So it, of course, looks very dangerous and it has its very own danger, but it's a calculated risk which comes in, into play. No? So you cannot imagine how much preparation went into uh, the time frame until we said, okay, now is the day, now we shoot, and now it has to all work out. Budget can make a difference in relation to make these things happen because if you train them, if you prepare them, if you work them out, how it really works, even for the camera and so on, then of course the result is epic. And uh, that is what, what America can do very well, I must say. <laughs> yes, well, Hollywood can really do all those in a fantastic uh, manner. I mean, it keeps us excited on the edge of our seats while watching that film. And, uh, you know, was there, a, was there that element of fear as well? Were you scared at any point in time that something could go wrong? Or is it that precise that, you know, mistakes don't really occur? Is everything so well rehearsed and prepared and planned for that mm. it all works like clockwork? Or, you know, something can go wrong? Um, it, it is actually a calculated risk because yeah. since you rehearse, you find out where is the danger. And then, of course, you can make it look dangerous but you avoid it. For example, you, you find an interview where um, Scott Rogers, he is a stunt coordinator, and Tanner Faust, no? they, they are working very close in America together, and they have been, let's say, one of the key elements of this uh, movie um, in terms of at least training Keanu and creating the stunt scenes and bringing everything together. And um, he said, and we actually used my very own cones... <laughs> <laughs> to set, set a, um, a cone line or lane because we simulated the Arc de Triumph. And in that way, um, to give Keanu the right path, we created a, a cone lane where you could see, um, okay, this is Keanu's lane because these are yellow cones. Then there is a red lane, which is for the opponents or the, the, the bad guys okay. and so on and so on. So there was let's say, very little room for, for failure. Yeah? And in that way, being scared or having fear is, of course, because, you know, in, in racing, you drive in the same direction. As soon as you go into stunt, things become opposite. Things become, of course, calculated and trained. But since there are so many people involved, it is in its very own way, um, yeah, a lot of potential where everybody has to function and you have to rely on everybody and each and everybody. So this, of course, maybe can create a little bit of fear that everybody functions, you know, on spot, on time. And especially, you know, when, when you look at the movie, there are long scenes, you know, and this is also related. You can do this with wire cams, for example, or in this case, very specifically, they did it with a drone. So a very long drone sequence, which also had to be trained because the drone pilot, even himself, he has to be on spot, on time. He has to see his drone. And it's not a mini drone. It's like a proper gigantic thing, which weighs, I don't know how many kilos, which is um, a piece of a helicopter, <laughs> of a real one. And, and that all has to work and interconnect, you know. And in that way, um, it is a, a tremendous amount of, um, let's say, preparation work and you have to look into the details and find out where are the sweet spots, what do you need. So it's 
it's a lot <laughs> precise operation it's an extremely precise operation no i mean you cannot be uh, you cannot be off your how, how much of a tolerance do you have to be off your mark if you're following a line we know it from racing that you have to be absolutely precise to gain that point one of a second or point two of a second yeah and you 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 hit it on the spot because you know you need to realize one thing a stunt driver makes in that m moment a difference when it comes about precision and the amount of repeatings he needs until he reaches reaches that spot. So as more you are, let's say, in maybe half a meter or even tighter in terms of the precision, then you need less shots. And when it comes to a shooting day, I mean, you just need to research how much a shooting day costs and if you have to invest another shooting day just because you messed up precision, then this just blows up money like you just burn it, you know. And in that way, I must say it makes a lot of sense. And that is also one of the key factors. You can say from all the people you see in the movie, I think without exaggerating, 90% were stunt guys. I mean, professionals. And that makes it possible that, because not only driving, you know, when you look at all the fighting, these guys, they fall downstairs, they they were flipped by cars, they were, and, and usually with their real own body, you know, that is a, a, a big amount of respect, I, I must say. So it's okay for Keanu Reeves to mess up a shot, but, you know, it's not really okay for you guys to, because you guys are precision drivers. <laughs> And no, I think he is very hard on himself. You know, he is one of the most down to earth because I was allowed to work with him in relation to um, training. And um, he is very hard on himself because I would say he also wants to do it correctly. And he also wants to do it quick. And he doesn't want to waste shots. And in that way, of course, maybe let's say when it came to my position of the reverse, for example, he step, stepped out and said, let's let, let it a professional do. You know, because even for me, it was a hard game. Just imagine what it is for someone who is not every day in the car. You know, that all perception things, you know. For me, the best example is always on the German Autobahn, you drive 200 for 10 minutes and uh, suddenly you drive 50. What do you think? How, how does a 50 feel? Like you're in walking speed. And this perception change only comes when you repeat the story, when you are into it in detail. These guys, the stunt guys, the drivers, the cars, even the guys who prepared the cars. We had three bar barracudas in the end. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you that eventually. I was gonna ask you how many cars did you actually, did you guys actually use in the filming in the sequences in Berlin, and how many of them did you destroy? <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, of course, the technical aspect since the cars let's say these two stunt barracudas yeah they were prepared for proper racing you can say without a cage but they were so much prepared that you could um even destroy the gearbox because there was so much torque related and you could shift on the one hand from a reverse to front with an automatic and um, but at the same time if you missed the moment if if the moment of going from reverse into D or into drive, for example, or into second or first gear, whatever the, the setup that in that moment was, you could have blown up the gearbox. So the precision even for pre, uh, Keanu to do that right, and the pressure was so high that you don't destroy the car unnecessarily. You know, with, with just a don't care moment of going back into gear, you know? That was, of course, um, a special element. And we had to work, for example, because uh, the, the gearing was related to wire shift. Uh, the wire was making the shift happening. And that got hot, for example, because we had not, not so much drive wind. So based on that, we had to change a lot of these wires and so on. So in that way, the material was, of course, getting weak by the burnouts and stuff we made. For example, there's one scene which you might see where Keanu um, is with his whole body out of the car and he takes up a gun while driving and himself was doing it. So that we trained with him and that is related to a lot of burning, uh, burnout moments like uh, using your left feet on the brake, accelerating, yeah. let the tires burn, 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 burn. And then at the same time, his arm has to go out <laughs> and lean into the uh, on the floor and just pick up the gun and stuff like that. So, yeah. It, it it was 
a lot of nice key elements which made the driving scenes even um, very exciting. So, so tell us how, how, how you know, we, we all know Keanu is a car or at least not more enthusiast. He loves motorcycles. Uh, he's got a motorcycle company. Uh, he likes cars as well. So, you know, he's an enthusiast. But how good of a driver was he actually on the film? Because there's a lot, like you said, 90% of the driving was done by Keanu. Uh, it's just the slight... 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90%, yes. 90. So, you know, uh, the last 10% you guys, you know, chip in and help him. So how good of a driver is he actually behind, once he's behind the wheel? Um, I would say when I when I look at him, um, I see that it's only detail work, which we had to do with him, you know, because a basic understanding was completely there. But um, when it comes to details like, okay, because I know from driving training, the eyes are the key factor. So how do you steer your eyes? Where do you look exactly? I would say there was adjustment and that he had to learn. But the perception to to make a reverse and flick the car or even there's a scene yes. or where he's doing a 270 in between the traffic that of course was a little bit staged with the traffic, but this 270 he did and he did complete and he did it proper. And there he had all the overview required to make it happen. And um, in that way, I would say there was maybe, you know, because he did it in a way when I um, remember a 360, you do a 360 like this, like um, pop, pop, then you turn and then you actually do the steering like this to end up straight again. Yeah. And the 270 ends here. So what he was doing, for example, I remember a very clear moment. He was instead of doing this, he was doing this. And so since the car was getting enough, it was okay. But if you want to do it proper, you should have done this. So it's just these very small, minor things we had to, we had to make him conscious of. So, so, now, so now you're a fan of uh, are you a fan of the John Wick movies? Have you watched all the first three of them? In fact, the reality is I watched one, and I think I watched the second part. Um, where this Mustang was yes. jumping out of the gate and stuff. And that yes. was already impressing me a lot in terms of the driving situation. If you ask me, I would have loved maybe a little more driving in this one. But um, the overall picture of the movie is very balanced. You know, you have a good amount of, let's say, conversations, funny conversations. You have a good amount amount of fighting you have a good amount of body stunts and a very good amount of driving itself i'm just saying that i would have loved the movie maybe to be 90 percent driving 10 percent fighting because i'm not a fighter but when it comes to an action movie it is like a modern western merged with mixed martial arts with um art with um this manga idea so I think they touched every source and merged it into a beautiful movie. And um, that's why I also, I understand the art thought behind when I was involved and now seeing the result. So in that way, I um, I would say I became a fan of this idea. Tell me, what was, what was your most interesting moment when you were filming your sequences? Um, Maybe it's scary, maybe a lot of fun, but what was that one moment that you will take back with you and say, this is the one part that I really enjoyed doing and I'm glad to have been a part of this movie for having done this stuff. Um, it's definitely the the reverse spin when I throw the guy into the um, thing. When I look at it from today's perspective, I think we got the exact shot wanted. Um, I, I know I did in training, a much closer version, uh, uh, quite scary version. And I would have loved to repeat that one, but it would have not fitted in the way they shot it. So even if I would have made it much closer to um, polish my ego, yeah, <laughs> it would not have been the shot which they have chosen. So in that way, I must say, I, I think I found the right balance for this specific shot, the reverse flinging the guy into the cast. And um, in film, it is about, okay, how is the connection? And if the connection doesn't work, because nobody, maybe nobody shows you how does it connect, then you are living in your own world and you think, oh my God, was I precise enough? Was I tight enough? 
you know, but at the end of the day, it was working very well. And I, I served, let's say, let's say what was required. So have, you, have you gone and watched the film? Have you gone and watched John Wick 4? Is it, is it released in Berlin? Yes. I actually watched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you go there and oh that's me that's that's me in the shot that's me driving the car there. <laughs> you know I don't want to exaggerate but what for me is very calming <clears throat> and I must say this is um, maybe sounding borderline arrogant but the amount we have shot in relation to car driving stunt. Yes. And the amount I was seeing my my moment because I was not sitting in the Barracuda all the time. I was sitting for one, two, three, maybe four times in the Barracuda, where I know it was used in the movie. And times means, since they have made very long shots, every cut, you know, okay, this was my cut, this was my cut, this was my cut. In relation to the other scenes which were going around, like the BMWs, because I also sat in some of the BMWs. So I saw myself uh -huh, in this BMW, in that BMW, in this car hit, you know, driving actually on people and they got thrown away. So I'm a little bit proud of myself. <laughs> I was in so many little moments. <laughs> well, Ronnie, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Uh, also for all of you guys out there, do go out, watch John Wick 4. It'll be an epic experience. I'm a fan of the movies. I've loved all three of them so far. Where do you go for the fourth? Just waiting, collect a few friends who can come along with me and watch the movie rather than me going alone. But as soon as that <laughs> happens, well, I'm there in the theaters and you should be too. But I want to, and I have to do that, I have to thank Scott Rogers, which is the stunt coordinator, Tanner Faust to raise my bar, <laughs> Florian Hotz, who is the stunt assistant coordinator who actually made the effort that I'm ended up there because that is a realization you make in the film business the uh, competition is so tight these are the people who made it possible that I ended up in this and I have to thank I have to thank them and on that note Ronnie thank you so much for your time and thank you for this wonderful day for having spoken to about uh, well another epic uh, how do I say this moment in your life as well Oh, for sure, for sure. Mm.